Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we talk about self care that is not just a list of things that you do in the morning and before bed, but self care that is a way of life. It's a lifestyle of honoring yourself and treating yourself with the utmost respect and cultivating relationships that are amazing and having all this vibrant health and energy. That's what happens when you get courageous and you start looking at what's going on on the inside. And that is absolutely where I love to hang out. I think there is that self-care is dynamic. So it's got an external component, the things you do for your body. And then it's also got the internal component, which is the things you do for your spirit and for the whole rest of you. And I just learned the other day, from a a master medium and healer that 80% of our soul is actually outside of your body. So I don't know if internal is even the right word for the self-care that we're doing. It's internal and then even beyond your body. So I thought that was interesting. Anyways, it's super helpful to have a guide because how do you know what you don't know? You need people in this life to help teach you stuff that you don't know. And so I am here to do that. I love sharing all of the information that I've gathered and explored and used in my own life with you. And I also love to get guests on the show to help uh, explain it even further. So today I have with me the lovely Rabbi Jessica Marshall. Welcome to the show, Jessica. Thank you, Christina. It's so wonderful to be here. And how interesting that 80% of our souls are outside of our body. I love that. I didn't know that before. I know. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fascinating. And that's maybe what people talk about when they say our aura yeah. And, uh, yeah. So we're just bumping into each other's souls all the time, which feels really exciting. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Get as expansive as we can. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So Jessica, I'd love to know a little bit about who you are and what you love to do. What lights you up? Yeah. Well, we have so many different identities to us, right? So mm-hmm. um, I'm a rabbi. I'm a mystic. I am a daughter and a sister. I'm gay. I am a huge nature enthusiast and endurance cyclist. So many pieces. Um, And really do as much as I can to dance with the universe. That's, Mm. I think that's, (laughs) that's really what I'm about these days. Um, Professionally, I do a lot with inclusive spirituality and nature-based rituals. So really finding ways to mark all of life's moments, both, um, you know, the big momentous occasions and all the little beautiful moments of life, um, ones that are harder as well with with ritual and with finding ways to sanctify where we are in the moment. Um, So I do weddings and, baby namings and also women's retreats and women's circles and speaking and inspiring people, all sorts of goodies. Mm, Well, I was just showered with goosebumps, which I like to call truth bumps while you were speaking about that. Mm. It sounds so important and valuable and wise, all of the different ways that you show up in the world. And yeah, I agree. Ritual is absolutely so important. Um, earlier, well, not this year anymore. Last year, I did a red tent celebration for my daughter. Oh, oh, wow. And oh, it was transformative for me. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, it was such a powerful event where we sat in a circle and it, I invited all sorts of people, but it ended up just being family members who came Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely magical. Like I saw sides of my mother-in-law and her partner that I've never seen before. I saw new dimensions to my aunt and it was just an absolutely magical experience. And uh, it was fascinating because we had all generations there and I asked everyone when was the first time that they felt like a woman and if they could identify it or remember. And it was very interesting that most of the women who were um, in the senior category, they said, I've never felt like a woman. Uh, <laughs> so we explored that a little oh, bit. Interesting. Oh, so yeah. interesting. And I felt like perhaps it was because of the absence of ritual in mm. their lives at that time. There wasn't a ceremony to recognize the transition 
And I just feel like it's super important. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's really interesting actually, because I um, work a lot with bar and bop mitzvah students and in Judaism, that's the, you know, 13 years old coming of age ritual. And I'm working with a young woman right now. And um, we are doing kind of the more formal Jewish ritual around that. But the family wanted to do something the night before. And so I'm getting really creative. And we're going to do like a a blessing bath almost. Mm -hmm. So giant circle of the close friends and family and everyone is going to offer this young woman blessings on this Mm -hmm. next part of her journey and just kind of shower her with love and, and encouragement, you know, the day before her actual ceremony. Mm -hmm. So there's so many beautiful ways to do creative ritual that don't have to feel heavy handed or incredibly formal as well. I love that. Yeah. Oh gosh. I feel like we could talk about that for the rest of the show too. (laughs) (laughs) Next time, Christina. Yes. (laughs) So what we'll move into in the the form of the interview, honoring the structure and the masculine side, I would love to know what is something that you do for a self-care practice currently that really fills you up? Yeah, yeah. So I would love to dive into captivating joy, captivating mm-hmm. joy. And um, there's a lot of different pieces to this. So I'm going to kind of riff on a few of them and we'll see where it takes us sure. in our conversation. Um, So the first thing I think is really important to remember is that this is a practice. Our brains are really hardwired for negativity and, um, and to kind of stay in fear. That's like, that's just the straight up biology. And so if we can remember that um, choosing to find joy and stay in that energetic place um, is a continual practice that's that's really helpful. So that's the first thing is just knowing that um, we're going against a little bit of biology here and to give ourselves the the compassion to remember that. The second thing, and this is something I'm still continuing to really dance with, is what it looks like to stay in our own joy and light when someone else is suffering and giving someone else the dignity of their own experience without needing them to be different and without diminishing our own light. Um, So what does it look like for us to be in our own fullness and light, even if someone else isn't totally okay without trying to fix them um, and really compassionately holding space for them without taking it on? so that's, that's another part of the joy practices, how it in, interacts with other people and loved ones around us. And I can, I can riff on that more later if you'd like, but it's something I'm sure uh, that many of us had to practice over the holiday season. If <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, that might have come up. <laughs> Just a guess. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the other piece is kind of how it interacts with, with others. Um, The third is that the energy that we put out into the universe is reflected back to us. So if we can remember that when we fill ourselves up with an energy of joy and lightheartedness and playfulness, that we're going to continue to experience more of that coming back to us and and really feeling that in our bodies. Um, and my, I'll get into the details of joy practices in a moment, but I really love blessing both the, the big joys and also the smaller ones. So I do a lot with getting into the big juicy energy of my dream life and um, feeling, you know, what it feels like to really have these dreams realized and be in the fullness of them. And I also do a lot with the really like fun little sparkles every day and moments that kind of light me up and, um, you know, writing love notes to friends and little things that kind of tickle my fancy and seeing if I can, you know, brighten someone's day a little bit, or even just like laughing at the absurdity of life. Um, So that's, that's another piece. And then the last one is just, and I want to emphasize this so strongly, massive self-compassion. So 
we cannot always be joy filled, light filled beings, right? I, um, it's really funny. I, so you and I were supposed to talk uh, a while back and I had to cancel because I got the cold that is going around in December and was just feeling really crappy and uh, was also in the midst of a family visit that was pretty challenging for me. So I wasn't all, I mean, I was feeling physically yucky and I was also being, um, I was being encouraged to grow. I'll put it that way, right? <laughs> During this family visit. So um, just bringing massive self-compassion and tenderness to ourselves when we're not um, ebullient and joyous beings. And those are kind of the ways that, th those are the parameters that I frame my joy practice. Mm. Well, yeah. I, I have many things to say about that. <laughs> right. I just hit you with a lot, I know. You did. And it's so, um, it's so valid what you're saying. And I resonate with all of it. And um, so I want to say primarily two things. The first thing is when I interview potential clients to work together what i find is a lot of people say i just want to be happy all the time mm -hmm. and that's not life yeah <laughs> <laughs> that um we don't grow in the happiness we grow in the challenges and then oh my gosh amen yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what i feel like courageous self-care part of it is learning to navigate our emotions so that they don't rule us. Yes. We're not victims to them, but we get to experience them fully and honor them as information and really feel everything deeply. Like that is the juiciness of life. Yeah. As you were saying in your last point, we're not going to be ebullient and joyful all the time. Sometimes things are really hard. Yes. And there are corresponding emotions that go along with that. And they don't have to overtake us. We don't have to drown in them. We get to experience them and honor them. And they are helping us choose from the buffet of life, like the ones that don't feel yes. so good. Okay, what's causing that? Maybe less of that choice in life. Right. And what's causing the ones that are the little moments of gratitude and joy? And yes, please, I'll, I'll go back to the buffet and do more of that. Yeah, yeah. During, during this family visit, my little sister said something to me that I've held in my heart so deeply. She said, it's not about not having conflict or it's not about, um, you know, not, uh, you don't have to be perfect and joy filled all the time. It's really more about what the repair looks like afterwards and the growth and learning that comes from it. So when in the moment we're struggling or feeling triggered or feeling crappy or whatever, it's really exactly as you said, like feeling the emotions, honoring what's coming up, maybe taking time later to kind of understand what it is that's triggering me and then saying, okay, like here's the beautiful opportunity to shift coming out of this and to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I took a, a Meissner acting class earlier last year, and it's all about, like, ev I didn't know, but every scene is about conflict and navigating through it, and the Meissner technique is a kind of improvisation that's not meant to be comedic. It's meant to be, mm -hmm. like, how life is, like, how you improvise through life, basically, and what I learned about myself was, oh my gosh, conflict is so uncomfortable. Growing yeah. up, we avoided it at all costs. And so I would get into these scenes where it was just really obvious to everyone but me where it should go. <laughs> Dance around trying to make it not con no conflict. And every class I ended up in tears. <laughs> yeah. And my teacher said, are you okay? Like, I feel so bad. I said, no, this is what I signed up for. This is so good. Right. I'm right. learning that this is a really safe place to learn how to be in conflict and navigate through it. Like this is life skills. I'm so happy yeah. I took this class. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I so feel you as a Libra who loves balance and you know, everyone being happy. Um, I get it. Totally yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, okay. So that was the first thing I wanted to say, which took a long time. The second thing I wanted to say was I had an experience just yesterday that really encapsulates what you were talking about with some of your other joy captivation practices. Yeah. Walking home with my son and it was 
freezing cold. I had all these layers on and we had mittens and toques and um, walking through fresh snow. And he was telling me about his day. And at first he was really happy. And then he got into what actually happened in his day and he got really angry. Mm. And um, we were holding hands and uh, he just kind of lashed out and said, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm like, I'm a coach. I want to fix it. <laughs> right, 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 right. And it's okay for him to feel this way. And I'm just going to sh- uh, zip up my lips and let yeah. him be in his own experience. So I held space for him instead of trying to coach him, which is exactly what he said he didn't want. Right. And there was a part of me that wanted to go into victim and feel bad for myself that um, he was lashing out and that he didn't want my help. And I caught myself and just said, that's silly. Just let him be in his own space yeah. when he's ready. It'll be okay. And so I just focused on the joy of holding his hand because he's 11 and who knows how much longer he'll want to do that. Yeah. And um, it was, I, I loved that I could be beside him and walking beside him and enjoying the, the, the immense pleasure of holding my son's hand even though he was angry and possibly he was angry even at me, but I didn't internalize it. And within a few minutes, he said, I'm sorry, mommy, for, um, he didn't use the word lashing out, but that's what he meant. I'm sorry for mommy. Do you forgive me? And I said, of course I do. And then he could carry on. And so that just was a really clear example of, I don't have to solve his problems. I need to honor his experience. And later on, we talked about, some of the things that came up but in the moment when there when there was that such intense emotion that wasn't the time for him to be able to receive nor for me to um, offer solutions so beautiful Christina and I and I feel like because you were able to just hold space then he was able later to take a step back and say what he did you know like I don't think he would have been able to get there if you had gone into problem solving mode, you know, and I feel I'm getting this message again and again from the universe, just the incredible power of being seen Mm -hmm. both for ourselves and towards another, like all, you know, all you did, everything you did was simply to see him. And then he was able to feel safe and, um, and held in that space and, and shift through it. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah it's think, hard though. It, oh, it was hard. hard. <laughs> we we want to fix. I yes. so get it. <laughs> but, you know, when someone we love is hurting, like we want to make it better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I, I love that these are your self-care practices that you have explained really clearly. Um, and they do take courage. It, it took courage to not go into victim mode. It took courage to find the gratitude in the situation when a part of me wanted to just feel sorry for myself. Um, yeah. It took courage to not try to fix things and let him have his experience. And these are all the things that you were speaking about. That, like To me, that brings us into this really deep sense of joy, which is pervasive. And it's just Mm -hmm. the joy of the human experience, regardless of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's pretty exquisite, isn't it? I mean, um, to be able to just be this beautiful soul on the planet connecting with other souls, if we can, if we can shed some of the, you know, more superficial crap that we have to wade through and just be in the space of, oh my gosh, like the beauty of holding my son's hand on a wintry day. There's nothing like that. Yeah. 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 There's no amount of money that that is worth. There's no, Mm -hmm. like, there's just no way to even capture in words how magical it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love it. I love it too. Thank you for bringing that up because it felt important at the time. And I did reflect on it when I was going through my gratitudes yesterday and to be able to voice it feels really good. So yay. Mm, Yay. (laughs) All right. So we're going to pause for a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we are going to get into a story of courage that you're going to share with us. So be sure to stick around because there's more goodness in just a few moments. 
hey, you're back and we're still here and we're going to get into a courage, a celebration of courage. So before we get into that, Jessica, I just want to explain to the listeners if you're new here or if you come back over and over to hear these amazing stories of courage. One of the reasons why I feel it's so valuable to get into these stories of courage is because as Brene Brown says, courage is contagious. And to me, courage is the virtue and the skill set that makes the most difference in your life. It's the difference between a life where every day is pretty much the same and a life that is rich and fulfilling and nourishing and filled with expansion and growth. The difference to me is courage. And so when we hear these stories of courage and get to talk about them and um, discuss them and you get to listen to them, it brings that energy closer and closer into our hearts, which is actually where courage resides. The word courage comes from the French word cœur, which means heart. And so I, I love to connect your heart, Jessica, with the heart of our listeners and with my heart. And I feel like if we could all be a little more courageous it will help to really transform how we're showing up, which results in the world having a massive shift in con con consciousness and confidence, which is the other word that seems to want to come out. So mm -hmm. Jessica, I'd love to hear one of your stories of courage. Yes, yes. Um, and I love that you shared the Brene Brown quote. Uh, you know, we know that the people that we surround ourselves with are so important. And so the idea that this is contagious just resonated really deeply with me. Like to be, I, I've gotten incredibly thoughtful about who I let into my consciousness and who, who was in my, you know, inner circle. So yes to that. Um, can I share just really quickly with your listeners, just a few practices of getting into joy that um, might be helpful because I, I feel like we spoke very generally and I just want to give people, people a few things to chew on. Sure. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I really, um, I really want to give everyone the invitation to do what feels self-honoring. So there are some days that um, we may choose something that feels a little more time intensive or bigger and some days that are smaller. So I'm just going to give us kind of a buffet table of options and can choose what feels good. I do a lot with journaling my dream day first thing in the morning and really getting more into the feelings as opposed to the actual specifics. So if we can feel in our bodies what it feels like to have an amazing interaction with this person or to rock the socks off of a podcast interview or, you know, whatever it is. Um, I love having a inspiration buddy. So um, sharing back and forth sparks of light that, uh, you know, you know, like the example you shared about your son, you know, when that gets shared with someone else, it just, we hold on to it a little bit mm. more deeply. Um, I love the idea of being fun detectives, you know, just like looking for the sparks that light us up. I'll often go into a grocery store and like when the person is checking me out, I'll kind of think to myself, how can I bring a little bit of whimsy to this interaction? And um, just the other day, I did that, and I got a free bouquet of flowers from Aww. Trader Joe's. So there you go. Um, so it's it's often about those little things. Dance parties are huge, like movement, you know, nature, all of those pieces. So if if we can if we can really think about more the energetic piece, I find that really helpful. Um, and I I have a quote on my front door that says, "How good can this get?" Nice. And just feel that energy in your body. Like it's so juicy, right? So, um, so those are just a few little things for, for people to kind of marinate on and sit with and experiment with a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are super fun practices. I like the idea of being a fun detective. I call I it know, a right? pleasure seeker. Yes. <laughs> how, can, how can I make this? But I like the fun detective. It has a little bit of um, feistiness to it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so uh, a courageous, uh, something courageous from of late. It's funny, you know, I was going to share a totally different story. And as I was, um, as I was saging myself before a podcast this morning, something different came into my head. So I'm going to roll with that. Beautiful. And it has to do with exactly what we were talking about today. So um, I've been working a lot on the um, practice of 
honoring someone for exactly who they are without taking on their energy and staying in my own light. Um, it's really one of my, I think, biggest lessons in this lifetime. And I had a therapist say to me once something that was incredibly helpful. And that was when someone else is suffering, when they're in, imagine them in a pit, uh, you know, kind of way, way down at the bottom of a pit. There are three options that we have. One option is to kind of stand up above on the, on the ground, you know, above the pit and shout encouraging words or wave at them or whatever. A second option is to lower ourselves into the pit and sit in the muck and the quicksand with them and maybe try to kind of pull them out, but it's very hard to do when we're in the thick of it with them. And the third option is to take a rope and lower ourselves a little bit into the pit and keep them company, and spend a little time with them, and then hoist ourselves out and continue on with our day. And um, the third option is the one that I think is most honoring for both people. So my, my courageous uh, choice of late was to, to do that during a tough family visit and to do it when I was actually being triggered a lot. Um, you know, Ram Das may his memory be for a blessing, said, if you think you're enlightened, try spending a week with your family. Yes. <laughs> so, I don't think there's anything that can be more challenging than those really old, deep, you know, connections that we have with yeah. people. Um, <laughs> So I really did a lot around um, self-care practices where I would give myself uh, space to be off on my own, which would often mean getting out of the house and being in nature and going for a walk. I did a lot with calling my friends and saying, um, I'm really struggling here. I did a lot with humor um, and and it was hard. And I'll, you know, I'll share really openly with your listeners that there were a lot of moments when I didn't quite show up exactly the way that I wanted to, like I wasn't the Zen goddess Jedi master, <laughs> you know, that I wanted to be. And uh, my little sister who was with me during this visit said, Jess, it's not about a performance. Like you get to show up exactly who you are. So this just goes back to it. Like we can, um, we can be both, you know, really honoring of this idea of, of staying in our light and our joy and with airtight boundaries and, and health. And then we also get to be human, yes. you know, and have moments when we lose it a little bit and, um, and honor those two and know, again, that it's much more about the repair and the growth that comes afterwards than about showing up perfectly. So yeah, this family visit um, was hard and, and threw me a little bit, but it also led to a ton of growth and learning for me. Mm. That's so powerful to notice that, Jessica, and I appreciate your authenticity in sharing that. And often as people who teach this kind of stuff, I'll speak for myself, I expect myself to have it all down and to show up perfectly and uh, like when I started teaching about overwhelm, I got overwhelmed and I was crying to my coaches saying, yeah. how can I teach overwhelm if I'm not right. overwhelmed? Right. Like, um, because you're human and yeah. you need to know how to navigate through it so you can help your clients. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> totally. And when I think of the mentors who I most admire, they beautifully embody and hold deep wisdom and deep authenticity and playfulness and vulnerability and like they hold all of it you know I don't want to learn from someone who is this squeaky clean perfect uh human because that's just I I don't connect with it at all right so um we get to be all of it and the more we can honor all of those sides to ourselves I think the um really the happier we are yeah the, the more we can let in the fullness of the the human experience. They just, life is richer for that. Mm, I totally agree. And I want to touch specifically on something you said about reaching out and talking to other people who were not within that 
family dynamic so that you could maybe vent or get perspective. I think that is so important to do when we try to hold everything ourselves and keep it a secret if we're struggling. It, it just doesn't work. And that's one of the other aspects. Another aspect of courageous self-care is reaching out and yeah. getting the support that you need because th- there is nowhere that it says you must do life alone. Like that's actually impossible. Oh my gosh. You cannot, Amen. Yeah. You cannot do life alone. We're, we're very communal based species. We need connection. It is in us to connect and communicate and so I love that that, is, that was one of your strategies on moving through that challenging experience. A hundred percent. And the more we connect with others, the more we get out of our own heads and the stories in our heads and our monkey mind. So it's, yes. it's helpful in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jessica. And I know people are going to be intrigued by the work that you do and want to know more about your practices. So how can they connect with you online? Yeah, so the best way to connect with me is via my website, and that's rabbijessicamarshall.com, Marshall with two L's. There's a contact me link on there, and um, just reach out. I really, really love being in touch with listeners, and um, yeah, it's wonderful to hear how different practices land for you, so please reach out. Uh, My website is perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica, for showing up fully today and honoring yourself by sharing your practices and honoring us and blessing us with your wisdom and guidance and your vulnerability. I am so grateful that we've gotten to share this time together. I'm so grateful to connect too. And can I share just a special offer with your listeners? I want to leave everyone with a little gift. Um, In a few weeks, I will be launching an online soul gathering called Sacred Sizzle, and it will really be an opportunity for a group of beautiful souls to elevate spirit and magnetize dreams and captivate joy. So it'll really be around these practices. So if this feels intriguing to you, really be in the expansive potential of co-creating your dream life with the universe and nourishing your own connection to spirit and embodying the juicy uh, playfulness and excitement of joy, then um, just contact me via my website. I would love to offer uh, a free 30 minute uh, call, video call with anyone who's interested and we can dive into this more. So beautiful. This feels aligned to you. Yeah, I would love to connect. Sacred sizzle. I love it. I know. So fun, right? Yeah. (laughs) The fun Um, detective is showing up in that name. (laughs) Good. 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 All right. Well, thank you for being here again, Jessica. And thank you listeners for showing up. I know you have so many choices of what you ingest and consume in terms of podcasts and how you use your time. And I honor you for getting to the end. I I know attention spans are short these days and many things pull your attention. So you get a giant virtual gold star that you can put on your collection of (laughs) stickers that is in your imagination. For some reason that motivates me. (laughs) I love stickers. (laughs) And I invite you to come back again. Um, There are guests on the show like Jessica who offer such valuable insights. And then I also am getting back into doing teaching episodes where I also give you specific courageous self-care ideas and practices and strategies. So I invite you to come back again. My plan for this year, which uh, I'll do my best to stick to, (laughs) is to do one episode a week. I've tried five episodes a week. I've tried two. I've tried three. I've tried one. I've tried none. (laughs) And right now what feels good is one episode a week. So I invite you to come back again next week and listen in again. All right, we're going to wrap it up. What I want to leave with you is, I'll let it drop into my heart. I'll um, bring back something that Jessica said earlier. I invite you to not dive into the pit with other people, with your loved ones, because you can't help so well from there. And if you try to carry people out on your back, you're doing way too much work. (laughs) I invite you to sit on the edge or climb down a little bit and honor someone who is going through some tough stuff and also stay in your own space 
see if you can incorporate this practice into your next week. And I guarantee you will have so much more energy. You will actually feel like you're helping and you will get to flex your courage muscle because it's tough to do. So I invite you to do that and practice this kind of courageous self-care so that you benefit and also the people in your life benefit as well. Jessica, thanks for being here and sharing everything that you shared with us. It was such a delight. Thank you so much for having me, Christina. I'll just leave our listeners with a quote too that I love by yes, Neville. Please. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. A mm. change of feeling is a change of destiny. So I look forward to hearing from everyone how they honor all the beautiful nuggets that um, came out of this conversation. And thanks so much for having me. You're so welcome. All right. I look forward to connecting with you again soon from wherever you are in the world. Bye for now. Bye.